We um, remounted Groundhog Day in London last, whenever it was, year. And, uh, and you know, it did what it always does. It got lots of five-star reviews and um, incredible feedback. Uh, the West End at the moment's just so busy post-COVID uh, that we couldn't get a West End theatre straight away. We we're going to transfer into the West End. Um, and suddenly we thought, well, Australia wants it. Um, and Visit Victoria are willing to help us get it here. Um, it's a huge production. It's not always easy to get these big, big West End shows to Australia. And suddenly a, a gap opened up and it was incredibly last minute. I don't think a musical of this complexity has ever gone from the decision to put it on through casting rehearsal and getting on stage as quickly as this one has. And yet it's, it's actually impeccable. It's a fantastic version. Groundhog Day as a musical is a kind of mad idea. Obviously the first thing you have to do is set up uh, the idea of this repeated day. That's not a spoiler. Most people know what Groundhog Day is about. Um, so it's, it's very musically complex, but characters keep having to reappear as other people. There's dozens of costume changes. The, the crew and the entire cast are working absolutely 100% all night like often in a musical you'll sing your song and then you'll go backstage and you know read a book and vape or whatever actors do these days and but but these guys are never resting it, you, you you have to see it to kind of get it but of course like all good theater what you see on stage which yes looks complex and um, detailed is is just the duck on top of the water there's a whole lot of paddling going on backstage that you'll never see, but you can imagine. So Andy Carl remains the only um, Phil Connors we've ever had, except for a few uh, understudies. He's done this musical over and over again. He's in his own meta Groundhog Day hell. Uh, but as a result, he's, he, his performance, which is physically uh, uh, incredibly demanding, vocally incredibly demanding, it's funny and heartfelt. It really is a uh, uh, tour de force. And over the years of him playing this role, he's just got better and better. He's one of these rare actors who has this ability to just deliver the performance perfectly every time, like he's some kind of AI robot. But at the same time, every performance feels fresh and he's always finding new stuff and new truth. Um, often when actors do a role over and over again, they kind of lose sight of it and it becomes something else. And he's just, he's really an incredible performer and uh, yeah, we're very lucky to have him. Groundhog Day is sort of like a life in a day and it leans heavily on the idea of life being something that begins with a dawn and ends with a night and, uh, and there's a bunch of really great weather metaphors you can lean into. So it, it's a big, it's very funny and satirical and sometimes silly, sometimes absurd. Uh, but also it's about the big questions in life like how do you face the inevitability of death and how do you get yourself out of depression and what is valuable and where do you find happiness and for me I like I think that's why I love writing for theatre is and, and maybe even for my solo shows is that I love that uh, you can you can stretch as far as you want. You can go all the way to pure comedy, all the way to pure heart. Uh, within this musical is absolute irony and sort of eviscerating satire and then complete open-heartedness. And I think what I love about it is I get to sit in both those spaces as I'm trying to generate the score. I, d I definitely feel um, incredibly sort of emotional about Groundhog Day. I, I think I love it because it was hard to make. I think we always feel strongly about things that we've had to struggle to achieve, which is again what Groundhog Day is about, the sort of beauty of the struggle. Um, I think I love how detailed I, I, it is. I, I, I love Matilda. I, um, obviously I'm very attached to Matilda as well, but this is like a Matilda for grown-ups. It's got big ideas um, and it's sometimes a bit edgy and sometimes a bit dark and that's everything I love in art. When I, when I make stuff, I love to be able to explore the darkness and the light. And, um, and I think also there's something about this particular production with the Australian cast. I don't, you know, having pride in your nation always is a bit of an absurdity, but um, I can't help but feel really proud of the fact that I've seen this show in London twice and on Broadway. 
and there is absolutely no doubt that the Australian cast and crew, the, the company, is at a glo globally competitive level, to put it sort of crassly. It is just, you know, Australia sometimes has trouble creating big musicals because they don't have the population density to sustain them and they don't have the, the tradition of mentorship or whatever the, the, the reason is. But when you bring something like this to Australia and watch and give it to an Australian cast and crew, it's, it fills me with pride how, how good we are, how, how world class the industry is here. Yeah, so the, I don't know why, um, and I'm not going to examine it too much, but in the, the week of previews we've done, uh, the audiences have responded more passionately, they've laughed more, clapped more, stood up quicker than audiences anywhere in the world so far. I, I, I think it might be because Australians love that dark and light. It's part of our uh, culture of humour, is that we are happy to, to go to all those places. We, we have that sort of British irony, but at the same time, like Danny Rubin's script is like quintessentially, you know, it has this American tone, which we, you know, I don't know like what to compare it to. You can't compare Danny Rubin to anything, but that sort of maybe Seinfeldian or quirkiness, and then this slightly maybe British darkness. Um, and that is what Australia is. We're kind of a mashup of those cultures and then our, our own uh, you know, sometimes quite bleak sense of humour. So for some reason they're loving it here and I'm, I'm not going to question them. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Groundhog Day, I, I wrote quite a lot of it in Australia actually. I was in Sydney doing Rosencrantz and Guildenstern in the evening and sitting at home with a little keyboard in a flat above a cafe. Um, it, it was a bit more piecemeal, but I do believe in trying to write a score as quickly as is kind of possible because um, if you force yourself through it, 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 it necessarily makes it more a piece. And Groundhog Day, perhaps more than any contemporary musical that's certainly playing in this country at the moment, is something. You know, you guys just watched a couple of excerpts. I am always like, that just doesn't make sense. Like, Groundhog Day starts and it, it's basically a song. I mean, it's a two hour symphony or something uh, that intertwines dialogue and music in a really, like a, like a clockwork. And, and it's very deliberately like that. So I wrote it as quickly as I could because that means it, it naturally feels like it's come from the same place rather than writing something a year later and bringing a different aesthetic to it or whatever.